if you're walking down the street and you're judging everyone, you're like, I don't like that person because their skin color. I don't like that. that oh, she's she's not attractive. That guy's fat. This person's a loser. Oh, who put this in my way? Uh, you know, the more you judge, the more you're going to separate yourself, and you'll feel good for an instant because you'll feel good about yourself. I'm better than that. Mm. But then you're going to feel lonely. And then you're just going to see negativity everywhere. The world just reflects your own feelings back at you. Reality is neutral. Reality has no judgments. To a tree, there's no concept of right or wrong or good or bad, right? Mm. You're born. You have a whole set of sensory experiences and stimulations and lights and colors and sounds, and then you die. Yeah. And how you choose to interpret that is up to you. You do have that choice. So this is what I meant that happiness is a choice. If you believe it's a choice, then you can start working on it. And I can't tell you how to find it because... It's your own conditionings that are making you unhappy. So you have to uncondition yourself. It's just like, I can't fix your eating habits for you. I can give you some general guidelines, but you got to go through the hard habit forming of how to eat right. Mm. But you have to believe it's possible. And it is absolutely possible. I was miserable. I'm happy as a clam. And it's not just the money. I got there before the money. <laughs> you got happy before the money? Mostly, yeah. How did you get happy before the money? I started getting older. You know, I just realized like life is short. I'm going to die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, again, trite, right? Trite. In trite. many ways. Yeah. Well, Confucius had a great saying that, uh, you know, every man has two lives. And the second starts when he realizes he has just one. Wow. And I read that. And it was one of those book dropping lines. You know, it's like mic drop. Confucius had a lot of mic drops. <laughs> Confucius was a bad motherfucker. He was. That's a crazy one. That though. was a great one. Um, or another one is next time you get sick. You know, because everybody gets sick every mm -hmm. now and then. It's like a happy person wants 10,000 things. A sick person just wants one thing, mm. right? So it's your, it's your unlimited desires that are clouding your peace, your happiness. Have desires. You're a biological creature that stands up and says, I can do something. I, I move. I resist. I live. But just be very careful of your desires. This is the oldest, most trite wisdom. Desire is suffering. That's mm. what it means, right? Every desire you have is an access where you will suffer. So just don't focus on more than one desire at a time. The universe is rigged in such a way that if you just want one thing and you focus on that, you'll get it. But everything else, you got to let go. Did you make a gradual shift to happiness or was it a radical change? It's ongoing. It's gradual. Every day so gets you're better. happier today than you were a month ago. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy these days. Deliriously so. It's actually hard for me to hang out with normal people. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So you, you've made a significant shift over the period of like how many years? Probably about eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Wow. And uh, is this something that you've pursued through certain books or is it just like you, you've made an understanding or gained an understanding in your own yeah. mind and then started pursuing it based on that understanding? Yeah, it's very, very personal. Uh, it's basically you have to decide it's a priority. Mm -hmm. And then I tried every hack I possibly could. I used to, you know, I tried all the, I tried meditation, I tried witnessing, uh, you know, I even tried an SSRI just to see what it would feel like. How did it feel? Uh, it was, it turned me from a pessimist to an optimist, but I didn't like the physical side effects, nor did I want to be on a drug for a sustained basis. Mm. So I dropped it. And I but felt- But it did turn you into an optimist. Yes. At the time I used to be a pessimist. Yeah. Um, I started doing things like I would start looking at the, uh, you know, in every moment and everything that happens, you can look on the bright side of something. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I used to do that forcibly. And then I trained it until it became second nature. So for example, like a friend of my wife's was over and she- when we were dating and she took all these photos she took like hundreds of photos and then she sends them all to us and my immediate reaction was like why are you dumping hundreds of photos on my phone i don't need hundreds of photos I have some judgment that was right. my immediate reaction and then i could say actually how nice of her she sent me hundreds of photos i can pick the one that i like right there are two mm, ways of seeing almost yes. everything there are a few things that are like high suffering so you can't do that other than just saying well this is a teacher Right. But I slowly worked through every negative judgment that I had until I saw the positive. And now it's second nature to me. I also realized that like what you want is you want a clear mind. So you want to let go of thoughts. Happy thoughts disappear out of head automatically. Very easy to let go of them. Negative thoughts linger. So if you interpret the, neg the positive in everything very quickly, you let it go. Right. You let it go much faster. Um, get, simple hacks, get more sunlight right? Learn to smile more, learn to hug more. These things actually release serotonin in reverse. Mm -hmm. They aren't just outward signals of being happy. They're actually feedback loops to being happy. Um, spend more time in nature. You know, these are obvious. Watch your mind. Watch your mind all day long. Watch what it does. Not judge it, not try to control it, but you can meditate 24-7. 
Meditation is not a sit down, close your eyes activity. Meditation is just basically watching your own thoughts like you would watch anything else in the outside world and say, why am I having that thought? Does that serve me anymore? Is that conditioning from when I was 10 years old? Mm. Like for example, getting ready for this podcast. You got ready? I didn't. Oh, but good. I did, but I did, <laughs> but I did. But I couldn't did. help it. And what happened was the few days leading up to this, my mind was just running. And normally my mind is pretty calm and it was just running and running and running. And every thought I would have, I would imagine me saying it to you. My brain couldn't help but rehearse what, what it's doing. It's just rehearsing all the time to talk to you. And then I was even rehearsing, rehearse, telling you about the rehearsal, mm. right? So it was all playing all these <laughs> meta games. And I was just like, shut up, stop it. What is going on? And it took me a while to figure out, oh yeah, you know what it is? When I was a kid in Queens and I had no money and I had nothing and I needed to save myself, the way I got out was by sounding smart, not being smart, sounding mm. smart. That was the skill I perfected. So I am hardwired to always rehearse things so I will sound smart. It's a disease. It keeps me from being happy. So, But when you see that, when you realize that, when you understand something, then it naturally calms you down. So after that, I stopped rehearsing as much. Wow. But it's still a train habit. 